What's up guys, my name's Stu, and welcome to part two of my low buy store review with the flu. I guess that's what I'll call it because yeah, that's what I got. It wasn't Cohen. It was the flu, which has also really sucked. Anyway, let's get on to the space gear tab of the low buy store. Okay, we're gonna start at the top of the space gear tab and work our way down. Starting with Unstable Planetoid Detonation, this console is a little unique for the low buy store given that it is actually not part of a set. This is a solo console that is all on its own. Its clickability really isn't that impressive, it just disables a target for 12 seconds and deals some kinetic damage. But the thing that makes this console notable is one of its passive skills. That plus 52 Starship Control Expertise makes this very valuable for a control build. Control Expertise can be a bit difficult to buff just because there isn't much that increases that skill and what is available often has a much smaller buff than this. But Unstable Planetoid Detonation has one of the highest control expertise buffs of any console in the game. So if you're working on a control build, you're probably gonna want this console. I should probably explain what a control build is too before moving on. A control build is focused on gathering enemies and grouping them together into one single position rather than dealing massive amounts of damage to one or multiple targets. They can be very useful for gathering large groups of smaller enemies into one single location, which can be helpful for you and the rest of the team for destroying them that much easier. And while they're more focused on control than they are on DPS, they're certainly not slouches in that department either when properly geared. These next few are actually personal space traits instead of actual gear. Rurubian Explosives add some extra radiation damage to all your kinetic damage weapons, so this is really nice for a torpedo mine layer build. Make It Go will cycle through a random buff every 30 seconds. You never really know what you're going to get with this one. I'll put up the tooltip on this one just so you know exactly what it does buff and by how much and for how long. But yeah, it's completely random. You only get one at a time. You never know what it's going to be. Normally, I would really frown on the RNG factor of this trait, but honestly, this thing isn't that bad. A lot of these buffs are pretty nice, and it does cycle through them pretty regularly, so you'll be able to get at least one that you'll like, probably. It's definitely not a meta trait, and it's not going to be for everyone, but if you're amused by the mechanic, it might be worth it to you. Improvised Boarding Party adds some extra physical damage over time to the Bridge Officer ability Boarding Party. It also has a chance to trigger Boarding Party 1 whenever you use a control ability. It's a neat idea, but it doesn't do enough damage to make me actually want to use Boarding Party. And according to the wiki, this will give control abilities only a 10% chance of triggering Boarding Party 1. And that is not high enough for me to want to waste a personal trait slot on this. The Boimler Effect. You guys have seen me use this one plenty of times at this point. Anytime you use a Bridge Officer ability, you have a 17.5% chance to recover recharge time of any other Bridge Officer abilities in that shared category. Meaning this personal trait is very useful for lowering the cooldowns of your Bridge Officer abilities. So much so that when paired with one of those Borg Duty Officers or something like Photonic Officer, this could completely replace an Ox to Bat build. Which I think is really nice because Ox to Bat takes up a lot of room. Improved Photonic Officer is also an option, but again, that's a whole Starship trait slot. Next is the Enterprising Ingenuity Set. This is comprised of the Wide Arc Phase Dual Heavy Cannons, the Spatial Torpedo Launcher, and the Reinforced Weapons Assembly Console. The Phase Cannons are the most interesting piece of this set. While they function more like Dual Heavy Cannons, their animation looks more like Dual Beam Banks. So their animation under something like Scatter Volley looks pretty cool. They also have a unique ability that makes them rather powerful. When you hit an enemy target, if its nearest shield facing is down, you'll be granted a 10% buff to your energy weapon damage and a 25% buff to your projectile damage. This makes for a very powerful weapon that is capable of buffing all of your other weapons, so if you like phaser cannon builds, I would recommend picking this up. The Spatial Torpedo isn't that remarkable in terms of its own damage, and that's because it functions more like a missile launcher than an actual torpedo. This means it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it has a very low recharge time, in this case being a 2 second recharge, it also has a 180 degree firing arc, meaning you're going to have a much wider targeting range than the average torpedo. The Spatial Torpedo also has a special ability that's a bit similar to the Phase Cannons. When dealing damage to a target whose nearest shield facing is down, it'll deal an extra 20% bonus damage on the hit. Though unlike the Phase Cannons, this bonus damage buff only applies to the torpedo itself. And then there's the console, Reinforced Weapons Assembly, which really isn't all that remarkable. Its passives will give you a buff to power transfer rate, and to your maximum weapons power, of course, that max weapons power isn't going to stack with anything else that increases your max weapons power, so if you're using the isomag consoles, that really isn't going to be of much use to you. And the console's actual ability is actually also a passive ability, it's not a click. Whenever you activate a bridge officer ability that drains shields or energy, you'll lower your own weapon power cost by 40%, for 10 seconds. 
So it's meant to encourage you to use more drain abilities, but personally I find that a little annoying just because that's going to cut into the number of unconventional systems triggers I have. Honestly, the only real reason to use this console, or the torpedo for that matter, is for the set bonus of the Enterprising Ingenuity set. The two-piece is called Careless Overload. It's a self-activated power that has a two-minute cooldown. It activates a unique firing mode that will only trigger on the phase cannons of the Spatial Torpedo. It's an AoE firing mode that's rather powerful, and since it only affects the phase cannons and the Spatial Torpedo, it's not going to interfere with your normal firing modes. The downside is that after its 10 second uptime, it will take both of those weapons offline for another 10 seconds. The three-piece, Careful Tuning, will help fix that, however. Not only does it remove the expiration penalty from Careless Overload, but it also cuts its recharge time in half. Overall, the only piece of this set I would call a must-have is the phase cannons. If you like phaser cannon builds, these are a nice weapon to have. And while the other two pieces aren't bad, I wouldn't call them must-haves. So I would only consider those if I was putting together some kind of theme build. Next is the Baul Linked Sentry set, and I'll say this right now, having at least the two-piece of this set is a must-have for anti-proton builds. The console, Baul Linked Sentry Coordination Matrix, doesn't have a click ability, but it does have some nice passives, including a nice Cat 1 buff to anti-proton damage, a small buff to your hull capacity, and it can also remove control effects and make you immune to control for 5 seconds, which will have a 30 second recharge. This is nice to have against enemies like the Borg that love to lock on Tractor Beam onto you. The next part of the set is the Omnidirectional Baul Linked Sentry Anti-Proton Beam Array. There really isn't that much to say about it, it's a set Omni Beam. It deals anti-proton damage, it has the same Baul Refraction proc as normal Baul weapons have. The only interesting thing about this Omni Beam, besides its set bonuses, is that it has a 0.5 recharge time. Most beam weapons have a recharge time of 1 second, so this is going to be firing twice as quickly as your normal beam array. The last piece of this set is the Baul Linked Sentry Anti-Proton Kinetic Torpedo Launcher. And like the Omni Beam, there really isn't much to note about this torpedo beyond its set bonuses. It too has the Baul Refraction proc, but that's about all that makes this torpedo special. The big thing that bugs me about this torpedo is that while it's called an anti-proton torpedo, it actually doesn't deal any anti-proton damage. It's all kinetic damage. You might be thinking right now, of course it deals kinetic damage, weirdo, it's a torpedo. But there are plenty of torpedoes in the game that deal other types of damage other than just kinetic. In fact, I'll be going over one of them when I get down to the Zinkethi Resolve set. Anyway, the real interesting thing about these pieces of gear is their set bonuses. The two piece is called Oppressive Balance. This will grant Baul weapons the ability to chain an additional time, so instead of 5% of their damage bouncing to one additional target, it'll bounce to two. If you're using anti-proton weapons that aren't Baul, however, this two-piece will grant the refraction ability to those. However, they will only refract once. Only Baul weapons can get the double refraction. The two-piece will also give a 100% bonus damage buff to the damage dealt by refractions. This two-piece bonus is the thing that is a must-have for anti-proton builds, because it basically gives you the ability to spread your anti-proton damage around that much more. It is best with Baul anti-proton weapons because you get two refractions instead of one, but it's still not bad with other anti-proton weapons, because they'll still have their own unique procs coupled with the Baul refraction. Oh, I should probably mention, Baul anti-proton weapons are available in the Infinity Lockboxes, so you can get them out of weapons packs that drop from the Infinity Lockboxes or off of the Exchange. The three-piece bonus off this set is called Predator Prey, and this one is a click ability. Activating it will remove all control effects from your starship and grant you a 50% bonus damage buff to all anti-proton damage for 30 seconds. This is part of the reason why I think it's kind of dumb that the torpedo on this set doesn't do any kind of anti-proton damage, because it's not going to benefit from this buff. Like I said earlier, I think that the two-piece is the must-have, but the three-piece is more kind of an optional thing, and that's largely because this is a click ability and therefore it has a two-minute recharge time. Unlike with consoles, there's no way to reduce the recharge times on a set bonus click ability, so you're not going to get a huge amount of use out of that, especially on like quicker TFOs like ISE. But even just one 30 second hit of a 50% bonus damage buff for your anti-proton weapons is still a really nice buff. So it's going to be up to you if you want to invest in the full 3 piece or not. If you're only going to go with the 2 piece, I would recommend going with the console and the Omni Beam. The console buffs your anti-proton damage, so it's obvious why you would want to have that and the Omni Beam just because you're going to get more benefit out of that than the Torpedo, even on a cannon build. Largely because you usually don't want to run more than one Torpedo on an energy weapon build, and you'll likely be better off running the Dark Matter Quantum Torpedo from the Discovery Reputation than you would be running this Torpedo, because then you'll get the Dark Matter Quantum's two-piece bonus as well. Next up is the Ultimate Adaptation set, and much like with the Baul set, this one is a must-have for the two-piece bonus, but this one is for Plasma builds, but the three-piece bonus is still pretty nice. 
The console for this set is the Ultimate Modified Swarm Processor. Now, this console does not have a click ability, but it does have a number of passives. The first being that it auto-deploys an ultimate drone that will assist you in combat. I use the term assist rather loosely here because the drone does next to no damage whatsoever. It just kind of flies around and does a little pea shooter at everyone that gets nearby. The crit chance buff that this console gives, however, that's what makes this thing special. The Ultimate Swarm Processor currently has the highest crit chance buff of any single console in the game, maxing out at a 3.9% crit chance buff when you get it to Mark 15 and Epic quality. It also has an accuracy buff that will max out at plus 35 when you get it to Mark 15 Epic, but the crit chance is really where it's at with this console. I know I said this set is really good for plasma weapon builds, and it is, but this console itself is actually good for pretty much any type of damage build. So if you're looking for something to buff your crit chance, this is something worth looking at. Though I would look at the Zero Point Energy Conduit console first. Its crit chance buff only maxes out at 2.4%, but it's available from the new Romulus reputation, so it's going to be much more obtainable for free-to-play players. Or you can just run both and have a ton of crit chance. Next is the Omnidirectional Ultimate Modified Plasma Beam Array. Now, for the most part, this is like any other Omni Beam. This is part of the Ultimate set, so it deals plasma damage, and this is actually, I'm pretty sure, the only set Omni that deals plasma damage. Which is going to be a bit of a bummer for free-to-play players or budget players, because there's no other set Omni that deals plasma damage. This is the only one. Fortunately, it's a good one, though. For one, it has the proc from Ultimate Plasma Weapons, which you can also find in the Infinity Lockboxes or the Exchange. What that proc does is a chance to apply a debuff to plasma and kinetic damage resistance to your enemies. Which is actually pretty nice if you're flying a plasma build. What's interesting about this Omni Beam is that it also has a passive plus one to crit chance buff. This is interesting because this is a passive buff that will apply to your whole ship, not just this one weapon. This is the only weapon in the game currently that has a ship-wide buff like this. Normally this is something you would only see on a console. And the last part of this set is the Ultimate Modified Kelvin Torpedo Launcher. Like the name suggests, this torpedo functions a lot like normal Kelvin Timeline torpedoes. Meaning they have very low damage output, but they have a very low recharge time as well, so you can spam them quite more frequently than normal torpedoes, having a recharge time of only 4 seconds. And this torpedo has a unique proc. When fired, it has a 15% chance that for 15 seconds, you will gain a plus 3 critical chance buff to all your plasma weapons and abilities. However, that effect is guaranteed to trigger if the torpedo scores a critical hit. So, as you've probably noticed, this set is very focused on crit chance. The console has a big crit chance buff on it, the Omni Beam has a crit chance buff on it, which is unusual for our weapon, and the torpedo has a chance to trigger an additional crit chance buff. That's a lot of crit chance, which means you'll be able to focus more on your crit severity in your consoles. The set bonuses are really interesting here too. The two-piece set is called Plasma Saturation Bombardment. Every time your weapons miss or you score a critical hit, you will fire a bolt of plasma damage, maxing out at two bolts per second. Crit chance is not difficult to build up, especially with this set because it's already so crit chance focused, so it's pretty easy to guarantee that two bolts per second out of this two-piece. The three-piece bonus is called Starfleet Ultimate Hybrid Arms, and this is another click ability. Activating it will grant a 100% firing cycle haste buff to your weapons for 12 seconds. 12 seconds isn't that long of a time, and it does have a 2 minute recharge time, but that's a lot of haste. So this is why I said the two-piece is really the must-have part of this set. Plasma Saturation Bombardment is like having a second weaker experimental weapon. For that, I would probably go with the console and the Omni Beam. And for a torpedo, just use the Dark Matter Quantum Torpedo to get its two-piece with the Lorca's console, which that gives crit severity, which will mix nicely with this crit chance focused set. But if you like the idea of getting a crap ton of haste out of your build for a short duration, which is not a bad thing, I definitely guarantee that, then yeah, by all means, get the torpedo as well. Next is Covert Mine Layer Suite. This one isn't part of a set, this one's just on its own. What this console does is lower the shared cooldown of your mines by 0.5 seconds, gives them a decent Cat 1 damage buff, and will allow far away mines to creep toward enemies. And by far away, they mean 6 to 10 kilometers. You also have the option to disable the mine creep feature though I don't really know why you would want to. It's an interesting console if you like mines, but Ordnance Accelerator is still better. Not only does it lower the shared cooldown of your mines by 1.5 seconds, but also lowers their individual recharge times by 20%, and gives a damage buff to all your projectile weapons, not just your mines. Plus, it's Reputation Gear, available in the Gamma Task Force Reputation, so it's much easier to obtain. And before you ask, no, those shared cooldown buffs for your mines do not stack with each other, so there is no point in equipping both consoles. So yeah, if you want to buff your minds, just get Ordnance Accelerator. Moving on to the Zinkethi Resolve set. This one is a Tetrion set. This is a three-piece set, but actually has four pieces because you have the option to pick between the dual heavy cannons or the dual beam bank. Both the cannon and the dual beam bank will have the normal diffusive Tetrion proc, 
which are also available as lockbox weapons in the infinity lockboxes on the exchange. What that proc is, is a chance to apply shield diffusion, which buffs your shield resistance while lowering your targets. However, these low buy versions also have an additional proc called apply proto matter radiation, which is a chance to apply a radiation damage over time effect onto an enemy that will last 15 seconds and ignore 80% of enemy shields. The advanced diffusive Tetrion torpedo launcher has the same procs as the energy weapons, but because it's a torpedo, and thus will obviously have a much lower firing rate, they up those chances to 10%. Now, the interesting thing about this torpedo is that it doesn't deal kinetic damage like most other torpedoes. If you look at the tooltip, that says Tetrion damage. So this is technically an energy torpedo, but with a lower cooldown. That's why it's called a Tetrion torpedo launcher. It actually deals Tetrion damage. Which brings me back to what I was saying about the Baul anti-proton torpedo. That's called an anti-proton torpedo. Why doesn't it deal anti-proton damage? Yes, I know it's called the Anti-Proton Kinetic Torpedo, but still, it's got Anti-Proton in the name in it, and it should deal some amount of Anti-Proton damage. Okay, rant over, moving on. The last piece of this set is the Bias Configuration Modulator Console. This is another one that's pretty straightforward because it has no click abilities, so it's nothing but passives. You get a buff to Tetrion damage, which makes sense because it's a Tetrion set. A buff to turn rate, which is going to be helpful if you're flying something large and bulky, especially because both the weapons on this set are forward-facing. And you get a small weapon damage buff for firing on a foe's forward arc. This part I really don't like, mostly because I'm someone who likes to use the intel specialization to gain access to space flanking, which means I prefer to focus on the enemy's rear arc instead, which is more beneficial because that grants bonus damage, this is just a small cat 1 buff. So yeah, with such a small damage buff, it's really not much of a motivator to get you to change your strategy. Okay, let's look at the set bonuses, which honestly really are not that great. The two pieces are buffed to projectile damage and shield resistance. The projectile damage might be nice if you're running a torpedo build, but I can't imagine you wanting to run any of these pieces on a torpedo build, because it's all Tetrion damage. And as for the shield resistance, I mean, y'all know how I feel about shield tanking. And regardless of that, there are far better ways to buff your shields than just this two-piece. Now the three-piece gives you a buff to Tetrion damage. It also gives you another ability called Zinkethi Opus. Every time you activate a Torpedo Bridge Officer ability, you gain a 25% buff to your flight turn rate. That's it, just some more turn rate for five whole seconds. Yeah, this set overall is pretty mediocre in my opinion, especially compared to some of the others we've already looked at in the low buy store. If you're wanting to build a Tetrion build, the dual heavy cannon or the dual beam bank might interest you because of that extra radiation damage plus the diffusion proc. Oh, I should note that equipping both of the energy weapons will not grant you the two-piece bonus, and that's because the energy weapons occupy the same slot in that set, so it will only count them as one. Kind of like when you equip both the Tetrion turret and the Omni Beam, or the Terran Task Force Beam Array and the dual heavy cannon. The Torpedo is kind of interesting because it actually deals Tetrion damage, but it's definitely not something I would pick over the Dark Matter Quantum. And as for the console, the Tetrion buff is kind of nice, but there are other consoles that buff Tetrion damage. The set bonuses just don't do enough to justify getting the whole set, or even just the two-piece of the set. Next up is the Sensor Modification set, and this one's pretty bad, so I'm going to try to speed through this one. You've got the Advanced Isolated Plasma Cannon and Advanced Isolated Plasma Dual Beam Bank. The fact that this is a single cannon is already a bad sign because no one uses single cannons because they're terrible. The energy weapons have the same proc as normal Isolated Plasma weapons, which is a chance to pull enemies closer to whatever target you're firing on, confuse nearby mines and targetable torpedoes, and deal a little extra plasma damage. But on top of that, whenever one of the Advanced Isolated Weapons scores a critical hit, it will also grant the weapon an additional amount of armor penetration but it really isn't much armor penetration. Then there's the torpedo from the set, which is a Tricobalt torpedo. It has the same armor penetration buff that you score with a critical hit, though unlike on that Tetrion set from earlier, this buff doesn't scale with the fact that this is a torpedo that's going to have a 30 second recharge time because it's a Tricobalt torpedo. It's just the exact same armor pen buff, but a lot less of it because it's still a 30 second recharge time. Oh my god, this is terrible. And if you thought that was bad, wait till you see the console, Weapon Sensor Enhancer. This is a console in a plasma weapon set that doesn't buff plasma damage. All it does is buff accuracy, starship ablative hull plating, that's the skill that determines kinetic and physical damage resistance, and control expertise. Okay, the control expertise actually makes a bit of sense considering the proc on the isolated weapons, but the rest of this is just garbage. Now moving on to the set bonuses, in the two piece we're finally getting a plasma damage buff, it'll also buff tricobalt torpedo damage. And then there's the three piece, which buffs all damage resistance, starship weapon specialization, which that's your crit chance skill, and your hull penetration. So this set overall really isn't worth anything in my opinion. Maybe if you're running an isolated plasma build, the dual beam bank might be interesting to you. But beyond that, single cannons don't do enough damage to warrant using. 
Tricobalt torpedoes are far too slow, this console has next to no beneficial buffs, and while the set bonuses do have some beneficial buffs, they're not high enough to warrant actually using these other pieces. So yeah, if you're wanting something to help out your plasma build, I would just stick with the ultimate set, because it's way better. Next up is the Saboteur's Gambit set, and this one is a bit more interesting than the last one. It's another three-piece set, but again, you've got four pieces because you have an option between a beam array and a dual cannon. The energy weapons are based off of Krieger Wave Disruptors, so they will have the same proc as those weapons. Though the proc off of normal Krieger Wave Disruptors is a chance to increase your drain and control expertise skills by 25 for 10 seconds. The Saboteur Disruptor weapons have the same proc, but bumped up to plus 30 for drain and control expertise, and it lasts for 12 seconds. Additionally, each firing cycle applies a stack of Krieger Wave Thermal Reservoir. At 10 stacks, this will increase all of your subsystem power levels by 10 and last for 10 seconds. So if you're running a Disruptor Dusai build that's focused on either drain or control, one of these weapons can be pretty helpful to you, regardless of the set bonuses. It's a very niche weapon, but I think it's pretty cool. The torpedo is called the Saboteur Delivery Vehicle Photon Torpedo Launcher. On its own, it's actually not that interesting. It has a 33% chance to knock one random subsystem offline on your enemy for 5 seconds. The torpedo does get more interesting with the set bonuses in mind, but more on that in a bit. The console is called Saboteur's Supercharge. It has some small buffs to control expertise and drain expertise, which makes sense given the proc on the energy weapons. And it also has an ability called Triggered Capacitor Supercharge. With this, anytime your target has a subsystem that's offline, your attacks against them will gain a buff to armor penetration. So that's where the torpedo's proc comes in. The console synergizes nicely with both the energy weapons and the torpedo, I just wish its values were higher. Buffing control expertise and drain expertise really isn't that easy unless you're dumping everything into those. So bumping up that passive would have been nice. And instead of an armor penetration buff, why not just a straight up bonus damage buff? Moving on to the set bonuses, the two pieces called Expert Manipulator. This grants plus 20 to control expertise and drain expertise. This might be why the values of the console passives were so low, because you get them the two-piece bonus. But I'd still rather have it on the console than the set bonus. And the three-piece bonus is called Delayed SDV Explosive Charge. Torpedo High Yield will rig the Saboteur Delivery Vehicle with a Delayed Explosive, meaning you'll get a second explosion out of that High Yield. Okay, as a Disruptor set, this really isn't that great, because it doesn't actually buff Disruptor. It just has a Disruptor energy weapon. But this set's focus on control and drain, as well as its other somewhat odd mechanics, make it rather interesting. One of the energy weapons in the console could be useful for mixing into a Disruptor-based Dusai build. Or you can get the full three-piece and make a goofy torpedo-themed build. I remember years ago, Augie played around with this set for the sake of the three-piece build, and I remember he really enjoyed it. So yeah, it's an interesting set. It's by no means meta, but it's quirky enough to make me interested in it. I keep meaning to pick up this set myself because I want to use it for my Orion Tomb for the sake of a theme but it just keeps getting pushed down the list for the sake of other things. You know how it is. Next up is the Delphic Application Set. I'm actually going to start with the torpedo on this one because that's the most interesting thing about it. And that's because this torpedo has been part of the torpedo meta for years now. The Delphic Distortion Torpedo has a proc that lowers enemy damage resistance, but the main reason this is part of the torpedo meta is because of what happens to it under the effect of Torpedo High Yield. When using Torpedo High Yield with this torpedo, you actually gain an extra torpedo to the salvo that you're about to fire. So if you're using Torpedo High Yield 3, instead of firing 4 torpedoes, you'll actually fire 5. And because Torpedo High Yield is a very important part of a torpedo build, obviously this is going to be a very powerful addition to any torpedo build. The Dual Overcharged Delphic Anti-Proton Beam Bank. This is a unique anti-proton weapon with unique abilities. Its proc is a chance to apply Delphic Overcharge, which will grant plus 10% to crit chance and crit severity for 5 seconds. Which is actually a pretty decent proc. Additionally, Firing Cycles will grant stacks of Delphic Capacitor Overload. At 10 stacks, this will grant the weapon a free Beam Overload 1 firing mode. Though it's important to note that this is the old style Beam Overload before it was changed. So instead of a full Firing Cycle worth of Beam Overload shots, it'll just be one single heavy beam shot. I'm also not sure how that Firing Mode 1 is going to interact with your actual Firing Mode abilities. Like, if you're running Beam Overload 3 or Fire at Will 3, Will that old style Beam Overload 1 totally interrupt your existing Bridge Officer firing mode? I'm sure there's someone out there who knows this or not, so let me know in the comments down below if you do. Because if it doesn't interrupt anything, then yeah, that's great for an energy weapon build, but if it does, then that's kind of a problem. The last piece is the Interphase Quantum Distributor Console. Not much to say about this console, it has some decent passives, but not in values high enough to make me care about the console. 
like if that exotic damage buff was bonus damage, this might be an interesting console, but as it is, this is just meh. Now for the set bonuses on this one, the two piece is actually really nice, granting 1.3% to crit chance and 12.5% to crit severity. That's basically the same amount you would get out of a maxed out Tachyo Kinetic Converter. With the three piece set, anytime Delphic Capacitor Overload kicks in, it'll also grant a Torpedo High Yield 1 to the Torpedo. And because of how the Delphic Distortion Torpedo works, that High Yield 1 is going to be more powerful than your average High Yield 1. That said, I would be worried about how this interacts with Concentrate Firepower, because that's already giving you an extra Torpedo High Yield 3, assuming you're using Concentrate Firepower 3, which you should be. But if this High Yield 1 overrides that High Yield 3 that you'd get from Concentrate Firepower, then again, this might not be worth it. Again, if any of you know, let me know down in the comments down below, because I don't have this full 3-piece set, so I can't test that. So, overall, if you like torpedo builds, you're definitely going to want the Delphic Distortion Torpedo. You might want the Dual Beam Bank as well, because if you're using a torpedo build on a ship with a 5-3 weapons layout, that would be good for the 5th weapon slot. Unless they undo the nerf to the Maelstrom Quantum Torpedo, which, fingers crossed for that. But if they don't, this is a good substitute for the sake of the 2-piece bonus. The console, however, I'm still not sure if that's worth picking up. On its own, it's not worth anything, but that 3-piece bonus could be useful depending on how it interacts with Concentrate Firepower or any of your other torpedo buffs. Now you can see from here on, all the gear changes from very rare quality to rare quality. These blue sets are quite a bit older than these purple sets that are further up, so a lot of this gear isn't nearly as useful in the current state of the game, but there are still some gems worth looking at. First is the Council Defense Pact set. The most interesting thing in this set is the Plasmatic Biomatter Auto Turret. For the most part, this is just a standard Plasmatic Biomatter Turret. It has the same proc, which has a chance to create a small AoE Plasma attack, but while the proc on normal plasmatic biomatter weapons only has a 1km radius, this one has a 2km radius. Additionally, this auto turret fires an additional shot to any target within 5km, which will deal additional plasma damage once per second. For a long time, this weapon was considered pretty inconsequential, largely because it can't be re-engineered. But that was changed in a recent patch, so now you can re-engineer this to whatever weapons mods you want, making it that much more powerful. This weapon alone I would definitely recommend for plasma builds now that you can re-engineer it, because it's literally just a normal turret with its own little secondary shot. The other two pieces of the set really aren't that great. The torpedo functions like a high yield plasma torpedo all the time, so it's big, it's slow, and it's destructible, and it has a crazy long recharge time of 15 seconds. The console has nothing but passive buffs, none of which are particularly good. The set bonuses are okay, but not enough to make me want to use the other pieces of this set. And that last part, plasmatic biomatter expulsion, it would probably be really good if you were using all plasmatic biomatter weapons, because it increases the radius of that AoE proc, but it only works if you are flying a Zindi ship, and I think that is a really stupid restriction. So yeah, the turret is probably worth it for a plasma build now that it can be re-engineered, but the rest of it I wouldn't bother with. Then there's the Contractual Agreement set. This one is more focused on plasma projectiles, so it has a Corrosive Plasma Torpedo Launcher and a Corrosive Plasma Mine Launcher both of which have a chance to apply a Plasma Damage Over Time effect, and a Damage Resistance debuff that gets stronger over the course of 20 seconds. The console is called Bounty Hunter's Friend, and I can't see this being a friend to anyone with these passives. The reduction in weapons power cost is kind of nice, but kind of weird considering the other two pieces are projectiles, which don't need weapon power. And the rest of it is just tanking skills. Seriously, what is this console for? The two piece gives some extra damage to Plasma Projectiles, and the three pieces are both focused around Shield Heals and they're not even good buffs. If you use a shield heal on a friendly target that's not you, that target will gain a plus 10 to damage resistance rating. Just plus 10, that's it. And if you use one on yourself, you'll lower the cooldown of any of your shield heals by 5 seconds, which can be done much more efficiently by an ox to bat build, or the Boimler effect, or improved photonic officer. So maybe if you're making a torpedo mine layer build that consists of all plasma torpedoes and plasma mines, I don't even know if that would work, but if you're doing that, maybe the corrosive torpedo and mine launcher would be useful to you, but that console and three piece bonus aren't worth anything, trust me. The Apex Predator set. I remember when this first launched into the game, it caused a huge stir among the player base because of this heavy cannon. The long range destabilized Tetrion heavy cannon. The reason this thing caused such a huge fuss when it first launched is because this is the only weapon in the game that has a firing range that is further than 10 kilometers. They upped it to 12 for this one. This caused a ton of pay to win allegations and stuff like that, especially from the PvP community. But for those of you worried about that, good news, because this weapon is actually terrible. You can give this thing all the range you want, it is still a Tetrion single cannon. Sure, they called it a heavy cannon because it's a little bit more powerful than your average single cannon. 
but it's not like this is the Terran Task Force Dual Heavy Cannon. And you can only equip one of them, so it's not like any of your other weapons are going to fire at that range too. The next piece is the Tethered Quantum Mine Launcher. And uh, you remember that scene from Galaxy Quest where he's like, uh, and my ship is dragging mines, and you know, he's dragging a bunch of mines. I'm guessing that was kind of the thinking behind this, this mine launcher, but it didn't really work like that in practice. But yeah, the mines will basically be tethered to you via a tractor beam every time you launch them, but that tether will be broken if your ship cloaks. The console is called Threat Analysis Matrix, and this is another terrible console with terrible passives that I just... What was the thinking here? Seriously! Defense rating and kinetic damage resistance. Why Why would anyone want that? Anyway, the set bonuses. The two pieces called Destabilizing Emitters. It gives a little bit of Tetrion damage, and I do mean a little bit of Tetrion damage, and a little bit of Drain Expertise. The three piece is called Tetrion Sniper Blast. Obviously, this ties into the theme of the cannon. It's a big sniper shot. It has a two second charge up time. It has a range of four to 12 kilometers. It'll shoot Tetrion damage at a single target and that blast will have a two kilometer radius. So anything within that two kilometers will receive damage. It also has a three minute recharge time. So you'll be lucky if you can use this more than once in the TFO. The three piece also has another effect called Sniper Synergy. The energy drain associated with the Tetrion Sniper Blast will be cut in half, but only if you're using it on a Herogen ship. I guess these ship specific set bonuses were just something Cryptic just used to do back in the day. I don't remember this. I'm glad they stopped doing it because it's really dumb. Okay, we're getting close to the end. Next is the Silent Enemy set. The first piece is the Heavy Crescent Wave Cannon, which from what I can tell seems to just be a normal Alachi Disruptor weapon. It doesn't even have a unique ability, it just has the same proc as normal Alachi weapons. Though I did notice it has a longer recharge time than your average single cannon, this having 3 seconds, normally they have 2 seconds recharge, so I'm guessing this one's damage is just scaled higher than your average single cannon. Which is neat, but it's still a single cannon, definitely wouldn't take this over a dual heavy cannon. The Alachi Subspace Torpedo Launcher is kind of in the same boat, I don't really see anything special about it, it just has a longer recharge time. Oh, now I see, it's in the description. Okay, yeah, these things just have a chance to disable an enemy target. Interesting, but again, 10 seconds is kind of a long wait for that. Now something actually worth looking at, the Bioneural Infusion Circuits. This is a universal console with a number of passive abilities, no click ability. The notable thing about this thing is that it has the highest crit severity buff of any console in the game, which is why this thing has been a long time staple on DPS builds. The two piece is just a little bit of disruptor damage and shield capacity. And the three piece is called Haywire. You gain a charge of Haywire every 10 seconds, which maxes out at 3. For every charge of Haywire, you have a 5% chance of reflecting up to 50% of the, your incoming damage back to your enemy target. Sort of like a really cheap feedback pulse. Except not really, because it's low by gear. But if you're using this on an Alachi ship, you can increase the maximum charges up to 6, and each charge gives a 10% chance. Next up is the Temporal Warfare set. First up is the Temporal Diffusion Device. Technically, it's a torpedo, but it's kind of a weird one. The torpedo creates a temporal distortion, which will have a 1km radius. It's also destructible and has a 20 second recharge time, so that is, uh, that's not a good torpedo. It does say that the torpedo will be in a state of temporal flux, so at certain intervals it won't be targetable by enemies, but again, that's gonna be completely random, so sometimes it will be, sometimes it won't be. The console is the Tachyo Kinetic Converter. This is another popular console with the DPS community because of its buffs to crit chance and crit severity. It's fallen a little out of favor thanks to the introduction of the isomagnetic consoles, but if you're still using the Spire consoles or anything else that requires buffs to crit chance or crit severity, this is still worth picking up. And then there's the Chronoton Dual Beam Bank, which actually deals anti-proton damage. Its proc is the same as the Temporal Disruption Device, in that it has the chance to significantly reduce flight speed, turn rate, and recharge speeds. None of those are going to be that useful in PvE content, but in PvP that might be worth checking out. The two-piece just buffs Chronoton Torpedoes, and the three-piece is a click ability called Temporal Inversion Field. It'll create a 5km square around your selected target, and give debuffs to flight speed, turn rate, power recharge speed, and if you're flying the Wells, Mobius, Paradox, or Anorax, it will buff those three skills for you. It will then have a 3 minute recharge time. So yeah, Tachyo Kinetic is worth picking up for any sort of DPS build. The Dual Beam Bank could be interesting for PvP, but I'm hardly an expert on PvP, so maybe don't ask me. And the Torpedo just sounds worthless. Okay, and the last Space Gear set in the low buy store is the Ferengi Marauder set. And much like the Ferengi themselves, this one's kind of goofy. The first piece of this set is the Rapid Fire Missile Launcher, and that's about all there is to say to it. Missile launchers function just like torpedo launchers, 
except their damage output is much lower than most torpedoes, in exchange for their recharge times also being much lower, this one having a recharge time of only 2 seconds. The next piece is the Concentrated Tachyon Mine Launcher. These mines deal additional damage to enemy shields, more so than your average mine launcher. And the console is called Rule 62 Multipurpose Combat Console, which has buffs to power transfer rate, starship drain expertise, and mine and torpedo damage. Which I guess makes sense considering the other two pieces of the set, but yeah, not a great console overall. The mine and torpedo damage isn't bad, but there are plenty of other consoles at this point in the game that have much better mine and torpedo buffs, like Ordnance Accelerator or Ferrofluidic Assembly from the Reputations. Now, the set bonuses are where this set starts to get a little weird. The two-piece set is called Sector Space Tycoon, and what it does is reduce the EC prices of all Sector Space vendors by 20%. This is such a Ferengi-themed set bonus, and while it's funny, the problem is, are there even any vendors in Sector Space? Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, I can't think of a single one, so I don't know how much good that's gonna do ya. The three-piece bonus is called A Lifetime of Experience, which grants a 10% bonus to Commendation XP. That's your duty officer progression. So maybe if you really care about increasing your progression through your duty officer tracks, maybe this could be worth it to you, but I certainly wouldn't pay 600 low buy for that. The three-piece also has the ability Friends in High Places, which will allow you to summon a freighter that will give you access to unique duty officer assignments. Though this ability is only usable on Ferengi ships. So yeah, of all the sets, this one is by far the most gimmicky. Not a lot of practical applications in the terms of starship combat for this set, but, you know, if you really like the whole Ferengi theme, this might be a set worthwhile for you. Can't really imagine another use for it, though. So yeah, those are my opinions on what is available in the Space Gear tabs of the Lobi store as of July of 2023. If you found this video helpful, be sure to let me know down in the comments down below, and while you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. If you'd like to further support the channel, you can hit that join button and become a member, or hit the super thanks button, or find the link to the merch store in the video's description. If you're ever shopping on the Epic Games Store, be sure to use my content creator code STU1701, doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help me out and I do appreciate it. Either way, thank you so much for watching, my name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.